The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network. The Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk and the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. Brought to you by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets, don't pass by, stop by, with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. And now, the voice of the Pioneers, Brian Staten. After three of their last four on the road, the Tusculum Pioneers return to the friendly confines of Pioneer Field at the Nicemonger Sports Complex. Hello again, everyone. Brian Staten for the Frankie DeBusk Show to be joined by Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk. Tusculum was returning home, and hopefully that was going to help them in some ways. They took on a Newberry Wolves team that has riding somewhat of a high. Newberry comes into this game at 2-3 and three on the year, but just 1-2 and two in the league. When they met last year at this time, Newberry was 5-0. and oh. They went on to go 6-0 and oh after a win against the Tusculum Pioneers, go 9-3 and three on the year, and advance to the playoffs for the first time in the Todd Knight era and the second time in Newberry football history in Division II. Well, the Pioneers are coming off one of their worst losses of the season. They fell 51-21 to 21 at Catawba. Not a whole lot of good happened in the game for Tusculum. Forecasters, the weathermen, all said it's going to be a horrible day. The weather, the great equalizer then. As W.T. Murden and his Newberry Wolves enter Pioneer Field. W.T. is a preseason first-team all-conference quarterback. He's second all-time in the Newberry history books in passing, pass attempts, pass completions, and total offense, just behind Josh Stepp. He's a good quarterback. The Tusculum Pioneers have a redshirt freshman quarterback, making his sixth all-time start in college football. Hasn't been great this season, but he hasn't been horrible this season either. It's a very opportunistic Newberry team. They come in forcing 10 turnovers, including five against the Wingate Bulldogs just a week ago. They put themselves in a good situation to score. Their numbers don't look great because they start at about midfield every single time. It's a pioneer football team that has struggled on the offensive end. Justin Houston is a great threat. Yes, there are plenty of great players, but it's got to be consistent and it's got to be for four quarters. It was the 17th renewal between Tusculum and Newberry in a series that was tied at eight. Newberry has won the last four, including seven of the last nine. The Pioneers ended that streak on Saturday with Coach Frankie DeBusk's 41st career come from behind victory, trailing 14 to three. The Pioneers win 16 to 14. All time, it will be the fourth game decided by three points or less with Newberry and the ninth time the games have been decided by seven points or less. This game, was a defensive battle. We'll take a look at that when we come back as the Pioneers knock off the Newberry Wolves. This is the Frankie DeBus Show. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Showtime. Uh -huh. You know what it is. Everything we do, we do it big. Uh -huh. Screaming that's not When we step up on the field, that's not Small town, but we still do it very big. Welcome back into the Frankie DeBunch Show. Tusculum knocks off the Newberry Wolves in come-from-behind fashion, rejoined by Pioneer coach Frankie DeBus. Coach, uh, you know, we've talked so much this year, we didn't have bad luck, we didn't have any luck at all. And I think the game, 
uh, probably dictated we deserved something like that. But our defense created a lot of our luck on Saturday. I, I tell you, Brian, I was uh, was talking to my brother actually on the phone and telling him, explaining what happened. You know, there we we have a snap go over the punter's head and gets them inside the five for a touchdown. We fumble it on offense, they scoop and score, and that gives them their 14 points. You take away those two plays, there's only about two or three other plays on the whole day that, that uh, Newberry actually had 10, 10 yards or more. Uh, I thought we played lights out defensively, not just that one position or uh, one particular player. We played hard, we played with a lot of passion, we played with a lot of pride. Uh, I was just really proud of how our defense football team continued to respond. We gave, uh, we gave them the football and some uh, some positions that they didn't have to do much to score, and, and now unfortunately they didn't make the field goals, but still our defense held and did exactly what we needed to do. And just really, really proud of that whole entire unit and the coaching staff and everyone involved. Do you feel, a lot of people say weather is a great equalizer in the rain and the field conditions. I still believe we tried to execute our offense, finally got it going, but it seems as if the weather took Newberry what they wanted to do out of what they were trying to do offensively, or was it our defense that took them out of what they wanted to do? Well, I don't think either offensive football team was able to do what they wanted to do on Saturday, do the field, do the rain. You know, again, their two touchdowns comes on, on our mistakes. If we just, you know, if we punt the football both times, it, it probably doesn't happen. And, and we go into half probably head three to nothing. Uh, but I, the weather came into play a lot. Uh, you know, the last few times we've been in that predicament, we have sort of found a way not to win. And Saturday it was amazing that we hung in there and believed in what we were doing. And I told our football team and our Sunday staff, our Sunday team meeting that the reason we won the football game was because we believed in what we were doing offensively and defensively in special teams and never got away from it and kept believing in everything that was happening and uh, just found a way in the end to make one more play than they did and find a way to win the ball game. It was not pretty early. The field was not pretty. The weather was not pretty. But in the end, it was beautiful as the Tusculum Pioneers knocked off the Newberry Wolves. If you missed any of the action, let's go ahead and recap the first half of Tusculum versus Newberry. Once again, the weather conditions weren't, were not great. This year, the Pioneers um, at home, you know, we haven't won a coin toss this year. Things haven't gone our way. We don't win the coin toss in this one, but you can still understand these guys still are bringing it, Coach. It was uh, Breast Cancer Awareness Week. They've done a good job with the field in a soggy condition. I thought our kids really responded exceptionally well. We talked a lot about the field conditions playing to our advantage. And, you know, you're playing a team that plays on turf a lot, so that you know playing on grass has got to be advantageous. And then playing in soggy conditions, we've we've actually had two or three of these games this year, and just really proud of them. I thought our facility staff and Chad Grind staff and Matt Goslin, Brandy Bridwell, and Buster Scott, and, and that whole crowd, David Martin and his people did an unbelievable job getting our field ready and had it painted up beautiful. Unfortunately, it wasn't that beautiful long uh, once we got started on it, but. Uh, really proud of, of everyone that was involved with our whole program Saturday to get a big win. Well, the Pioneers will have the football. This is the second offensive possession for the Pioneers. They went three and out on their first, a missed field goal for Newberry on their first possession, and now the Pioneers have the football. Pendergrass will take a sack for a loss of four uh, by Jimmy Holmes and then takes off and gets six yards here, but it was still going to uh, force uh, somewhat of a, a punt situation, and this is where the bad luck started. Yeah, you know, we, we've got to snap it better. I mean, our our long snapper knows he's got to keep his hind end down there and give us a chance to get a snap off. He was too worried about the field conditions and the wet ball and everything else that was involved. But we've uh, we got to be more consistent there. We work on that a bunch. We've practiced in the rain and not making excuses. We got to do better. And Newberry would take a seven nothing lead. Just one play. Darrell Elmore would run in from five yards away. But the defense may be bent at times. This is one, the longest play from scrimmage for the Newberry Wolves especially in that first half. A running play for 17 yards for Romello Doctor to create a first down, but they didn't break. And once again, you'll see W.T. Murden, Darian Crank, Darius Ben in on a tackle. You're going to see Brandon Bartland, DeAndre Johnson in on a tackle right here up the middle for Romello Doctor again. I thought, again, we played well defensively that, that long run there earlier. We miss a tackle. We make the tackle. It's going to be a three-yard gain, potentially a loss there. And, you know, we got guys flying around, and here we, we get fortunate. Uh, their quarterback throws it right to Laurenti Archie. Laurenti had a great football game. Uh, one of our seniors from Atlanta, Georgia area, and just made a bunch of tackles, made a bunch of plays, kept showing up, and there, there was one of them right there. Laurente Archie with his sixth career interception, tying him for the fifth most in program history. The biggest play of the first half for the Pioneers, Fernando Smith rumbling for 34 yards. Great job by Fernando. Happy for him. Our kids up front did a good job blocking. He made a couple guys miss and just running it exceptionally hard here. And 
Uh, we've got to have him do those things if we're going to be successful. We've got to get him the football and let him rumble down through there. And that was a very, very huge run. And here he's just getting behind those big offensive linemen of ours and trying to pick up three and four yards and giving us a chance. Fernando Smith on the day only lost one yard rushing on the afternoon. That says a little bit about it. Now, a little luck. Pioneers uh, throwing it, trying to throw it away was Malcolm Pendergrass. Fortunate that the ball, the interception was dropped. And the Pioneers attempt a field goal and, again, uh, the field conditions did not help. We're going to talk a little bit about the kicking game today, but a, a wasted opportunity. Yeah, that really looked good, Brian, from, from where I was at and then watched it on film and thought it was good too, but we don't need to make it that close. So let's do a great job here by our defensive football team taking the field. And I think that was a keen people's in on the play. I don't know who calls the fumble, but there's Big Cheeto coming up with it to Chaz Mulder giving us the football back. And, we get back on the field offensively after creating a big play defensively. Akeem Peoples, along with Mike Mosa, forced the fumble. Chaz Mulder recovers, and the Pioneers take over. First and 10 from the 28-yard line. Give it again to Fernando Smith, who's just running hard between the tackles. Great job there, picking up 12 yards, giving us a big first down. And you know, Again, the field's starting to come into play a little bit, starting to rain on us. We, but we've got to continue to execute in these circumstances. Yeah, we should point out that it is the middle of the afternoon, and it should be a little brighter than it actually is right here. And, and it's not, obviously, because the rain is coming down. Fernando goes for six, but the penalty will back it up, back to the uh, Newberry 22-yard line. The penalty was a block in the back or an illegal block downfield. Benegrass completes one to Justin Houston, one of his very few completions in that first half. Then to Deion Hicks, no gain on third down and five. So on fourth down, Logan Cornelius in to attempt from 30 yards once again. Good snap, good hold here, good kick. Uh do a good job keeping it together, and Logan missed that first one and come back out and put this one right between the uprights. And if he'd hit that first one like that, we've obviously had three more points, but great job recovering after a mistake and giving us a chance to put some points on the board. W.T. Merton is the first team all conference preseason quarterback pick this year. For the day, he went two for eight, one interception, just 27 yards, and on the ground, 12 carries, just 28 yards. He takes a sack right here by. Big Perm, Malik Brewer, and Big Country, Kashad Lyons. Great job of those two interior guys. We, we moved Kashad in and out there, trying to give us some more pressure inside the, the guards. And He's hard man to block. I really believe Kashad's having about as good a year as he can right now. I hope he can stay healthy and keep causing a lot of problems for every offensive lineman he faces. He's over 40 tackles on the year, seven tackles in this particular game. And then problems for the Pioneer offense. They were uh, after the punt by Newberry. Pioneers were backed up deep in their own territory. Facing third down and three, fumble the ball. A.J. Booker for Newberry will pick it up, and he'll take it 11 yards into the end zone, and the point after, making it 14-3 to three Newberry. Yeah, unacceptable ball handling there. We've got to be better with ball security, and starts with Malcolm and ends with Malcolm, and he's got to do a better job of hanging on to the football. In that case, he's got to get on the football. We, uh... We can't afford to give them the ball in that situation. Sure can't afford to give them a touchdown. Well, in, this, in this particular part of the game for the Pioneers, just before the end of the half, I want to point out one of the final offensive drives. Um, they miss a field goal, the 32-yard attempt. They missed it wide right with about three minutes or in change to play in the first half. You drive down the field, Houston for seven yards, Deion Hicks for 10 yards, um, three yards for Pendergrass on a run, another three-yard run for Pendergrass, a 12-yard run for uh, pass to uh, Deion Hicks on third and 17. But then we went backwards. We had some penalties. Uh, was that a devastating drive right there at the end of the first half? And did it take a lot of the wind out of the sails? Because eight yard, eight plays on the drive, and you're deep into their territory before the penalties. Yeah, you know, we actually were putting together some good things. And we had some, some consistency working. We were converting when we needed to, making some plays. And then we got a couple silly penalties and took us right out of the opportunity of, of scoring there before the half and needed to. We needed to have something good happen to us. and. Unfortunately, it didn't, but uh, you know you could see us st continuing to do what we were doing offensively, and even though the circumstances and the field situation was horrible, we were finding ways to move the football. And It's evident later in the game that we were able to do it, but we sure needed to finish that drive there. It's halftime, and Newberry leads the Pioneers by a score of 14-3. to We'll come back, we'll take a look at your second half and the comeback when we return with more of the Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank, your locally owned community bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. 
Green Coach Charters and Tours has been proudly serving the traveling public for over 65 years and is the official carrier of Tusculum College Athletics. If you have never traveled by Green Coach, may we invite you to join them for an exciting travel adventure. Visit online at greencoach.com. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show. Tusculum and Newberry meeting for the 17th time. The series tied at 8 all time. And we're going into the second half with the Pioneers trailing 14-3. to three. And i just got to be honest, Coach. I just, as, a, as somebody who's sitting up there watching it and seeing what the team has gone through already this year, I just, I didn't have a good feeling about it. And especially when Newberry came out in these two tight, two H-back, one set, and they were just going to pound it at us because I didn't think they believed that we could score either. Yeah, I noticed there in the third quarter, they were really trying to shorten the game. They were letting the clock run all the way down and feeling like the only chance we had was, uh, was to get the ball or them to turn it over. Uh, and we hadn't scored but three points, and uh, I wasn't sure what we were going to do either. It's, it's an emotional roller coaster on the sidelines, but our kids were always into it and continued to believe in what we were doing, and it's, uh, it's just a great feeling for, for our football team and for our, our kids to be able to come back and win a big ball game like this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the second half quagmire because the field is – not getting much better. Pioneers trail by a score of 14 to 3. And when we pick up the action, it's Newberry with the football, and they're driving deep into Pioneer territory. And that's just a, a product of what happened on the field. Yeldell was trying to uh, throw the ball out, and it slipped out. He runs, uh, and then he picks up a 15 yard penalty for either words or something there at the end. And it took Newberry out of field, out of field goal range. Yeah, that right there goes to show you a bad penalty can really hurt you because they got an opportunity to kick the field goal. And you know, we end up holding them there and dead gum if we don't drop this ball and the guy intercepts it right in front of our bench and I just sort of looked at Mark and he looked at me and felt like that was just the way the day was going. But again, we respond defensively, we take the field, we find a way to, to uh, keep uh, putting some pressure on their linemen inside and moving, moving that big front around and our guys are doing a good job. And Mike is he's put some different people in the game to give us a little bit more meat inside when they started going two tights and two H-backs. And, all of a sudden, it's just a grinded out football game, and we found a way to win. It's third down and three. This will be W.T. Murden trying to get outside. It's evident he doesn't want to stop the clock. He goes into a slide two yards shy of the first. On fourth down, Newberry would go for it. They're 0 for 2 on field goals for the day already, and they don't get it with a good stop by Laurente, Archie, and Rocky Jones. Good job sticking their nose up in there. Our front did a good job getting control of the offensive line. And Rocky and uh, Laurente, they uh, jump up in there, make a big play, give us the ball back. And, Still believing right now. Our kids are still playing hard. And then this happens. You have all the emotion. You go three and out to start the second half. One play, interception, give it to Newberry. And then one play, Pendergrass has a seam and just had the ball knocked away, recovered by Newberry. It's, it's kind of hard to win a ball game when you go back-to-back uh, -back possessions and, and turn it over on your very first play. And uh, I mean, Malcolm's got to hang on the ball, bottom line. He uh, puts it on the ground there. And, He's, uh, he's got to do a little bit better, and uh, you know I looked at Mark at this point in time and said something's got to be done. We got to make some changes. We got to make some moves. We got to do something different. And we just hung on to what we were doing, and defensively we stepped up once again. Did an unbelievable job keeping him out of the end zone. All right, we go to the fourth quarter. Newberry held the ball 13 and a half minutes in the third quarter, and Tushkillum a minute 29. So Newberry deep in Pioneer territory. This is after the fumble. Darian Crank, along with Evan Dansby, who recorded his 100th career tackle in this game come up with a big stop on second down and goal. Then it's third down and goal, and Merton, again, who was just two of eight passing, and really the two completions were in the first quarter, didn't complete a pass with, from uh, 10 minutes to play in the game, is looking to go to big Byron Dickerson, the South Carolina transfer. Great job here. We got him covered. You know, he didn't want to throw an interception. Uh, good job. I, I think that's uh, Akeem like Peoples. Mosa. Was it Mosa? And Mosa bringing the heat. Peoples doing the job covering mm -hmm. and hold him to a field goal. And, you know, I'm sitting here thinking they're getting ready to go up 17-3. to three. It sort of takes us out of the, the two-score range that we need to be in. This is uh, like an extra point, and uh, again, he's unsuccessful, and we found a way to keep him out of the zone or keep from getting any points, and you can see by the level of excitement that we still are, are uh, trying to find a way. All right, 22-yard field goal is missed by the preseason all-conference first-team place kicker. He is a first-team all-conference punter. That's Kyle Clark. Pioneers, however, unable to move the ball, but they did get it out of deep in their own territory. They punt it away. Newberry would punt it back, and then the drive happens. First and 10, Kenny Funny interfered with, so the penalty moves it up 15 yards, and the Pioneers, it, it almost appears as if that's all they needed to turn the luck around. You'll notice 
Justin Houston in the background. Max Gobert problems with the ball in the mud, getting it back to the quarterback. So it creates second down and 10. And this is Pendergrass looking for Houston. Yeah, we hit Justin out here in the flat. And, you know, we get six or eight yards there and gives us some third and very makeable. We're third and seven. And trying to figure out a way to get our best people on the field, trying to figure out a way to get some first downs. The, the field conditions are awful, and they uh, don't cover Justin here again. And Malcolm just floats it out there, and Justin picks up a big 15, 20-yard game. Pioneers were 0 for 12 on third downs prior to that third down conversion, and they convert it. And what do you do when you have luck? Well, you go to your big playmaker, and that was Deion Hicks. This is probably one of the biggest plays of the game, this and the block pump by Mosa. You know, Dion goes up, makes a great catch, stays in bounds. Uh, we give him a chance, and he found a way to make the catch. And Dion was nominated for Offensive Player of the Week for making that big catch and giving us a chance to get inside the five. And what's amazing is we've played all this football, we've not done very well, and we're still right in the thick of it. 34 yard catch by Dion Hicks, and then it's first down and goal at the two yard line. And a little moment of trepidation. Pendergrass trying to go outside. And uh, I think just lost his footing or he probably scores. He probably does. I mean, it's slippery down there. He's got to hang on the ball. And, uh, you know, they're going to make it hard on us. They're doing a good job stuffing everybody inside and give it to Fernando twice in a row here. And, you know, now we're, we're facing fourth down. We've got to get it in the zone. We've got to find a way to score. And our big boys up front just uh, found a way to make a crease. And Fernando just does a great job finding a little crease there and getting in the end zone and giving us a chance. And probably should have went for two right here. We talked a little bit about it, and I made the decision go ahead and uh, kick the football and fortunately it didn't, didn't back for on us. It's a one yard touchdown for Fernando Smith, his sixth touchdown of the season. And on the game, Fernando finishing with 22 carries, 85 yards. Again, only lost one yard rushing on the day, averaged four yards a carry along a 34 and will eventually have two touchdowns. So the Pioneers trail 14 to 10 after the point was good. Eight plays, 80 yards, under three minutes of time off the clock. Still in the fourth quarter, this drive begins with eight minutes to play. Doctor for two yards, Archie and Johnson on the stop. Rocky Jones comes up with the big stop here on second down as well. Right up the middle and Doctor has nowhere to go. Great job by Rock right there, doing what we're asking him to do, causing uh, some problems, using his hands well, getting off blocks and making plays. Rocky's a senior from over there in Anderson, South Carolina, so he probably had a little a little special grit in his bones for this ball game being that, that uh, Newberry is from his, his neck of the woods. Romello Doctor did finish with 83 yards rushing on the day, did lose seven yards, but will not pick up a first down right here as DeAndre Johnson and Kashad Lyons come up with the stop. Another big turning point in the game, special teams, the kicking game. And again, Kyle Clark unable to handle the football. Mike Mosa gets a hand on it for the block. Great job just by Mike just doing what we asked him to do. We wasn't really sending him to block it. We just sent him to make sure it was kicked. and. They bobble their snap, and we've got a chance now to get the football back. And great job defensively making them punt it, and even a better job by Mike Mosa going in there and creating a big play. And uh, just uh, you can see the emotion is high right now. We need to figure we got we still got to go score a touchdown. I mean, the game is by no means over, but at least we got the ball in a good situation. All right, 14 to 10 when the Pioneers take over, but obviously feeling pretty good about themselves offensively. Just went 80 yards. That doubled their offensive production on the touchdown drive just moments ago. Uh, I think we've tallied it up. It was eight three and outs in the football game for the Pioneers converted their first third down on their last offensive series. So Malcolm Pendergrass and the offense goes back to work. And again, here's a little bit more of that luck for the Pioneers. Yeah, we are fortunate once again. I mean, uh, thank goodness he didn't come down with that football. And, you know, so someone was looking after us a little bit on this day. We, we need some good luck to happen. We've had a lot of bad luck. And on this Saturday afternoon, I think some good things did happen to us. False start for the Pioneers, moving back behind the chains. And I'm saying up in the radio booth, we can't do this. We can't play from behind the chains. But the one crossing pattern we were able to complete goes to Kenny Funny for his only catch of the day. Great catch by Kenny. The ball was thrown behind him. Kenny ends up catching it, getting about 15 yards there, 12 yards, getting his third. And very manageable, very makeable. And uh, make a good call here and throw it out here to Justin. Justin makes a good adjustment, gets a big first down, gets it inside the 10-yard line. All right, third down and five. And again, Houston comes up with the catch. And Justin Houston, six catches, 59 yards on the day, was held out of the end zone. You go to your big 6'10 tight end, West Powell. You can see the rain coming down. You can see West kind of getting held there. Incomplete, but the flag does come out, which will put the ball right at the two-yard line. Yeah, it's, it's uh, fortunate that we get the ball first and goal in the two. And rain's starting to pour down right now. We give it to big Fernando. and. Doesn't quite get in there. I think we're on the foot line. I'm looking down there trying to get some information from uh, Justin Jeffers. He's given me some some things, that, some evidence we can get it in and hand it back to uh, Big Fernando and goes up and over and gives us the lead. 
16 career rushing touchdowns for Fernando Smith, his second of the game. It caps a five-play, 24-yard drive, a minute 29 off the clock. The point after actually fails because of a low snap, or Cameron wasn't able to hang on to it because of the conditions. The uh, pass attempt by Cameron Talent, or I guess I put it in here. You'll get a chance to see um, uh, nearly was completed, but it's now 16 to 14. Yeah, it was nearly completed going the other direction <laughs> yes. for two points. We got to do a better job of that. And, uh, Cam's just got to get the ball down. I asked him what happened. He said, Coach, I just, just slipped. It was a good snap. He just couldn't hang on to it. And uh, We take the field defensively, and again, the game is not over by no stretch of imagination, but we finally have the lead, and we got to do our part, and uh, we're putting some pressure on them defensively, and here comes big Kashad lines and making it hard on, on Murden, and we're, we're covering up the screen there, big Cheeto. I don't know if that was an accident or not, but he's, he's, he's holding on tight. It, and it's behind the line of scrimmage. There's no penalty. But Murden is hit on the play, and he does not return to the game, even though he's standing on the sideline. So in comes Zach Blair for the longest pass play of the game, as this goes for 19 yards to Braxton Ivory, another backup guy. But here's a guy we haven't talked about, Lakeith Brown. Comes up with a, a hit for a loss of a yard on Braxton Ivory. And then Zach Blair starts feeling some of the pressure, and Akeem Peoples Almost had a pick. Dang near should have. You know, Lakeith ends up being the defensive player of the week. He made a bunch of plays for us, sort of did, did, wasn't talked a whole lot about, but continued to make a bunch of plays. And Akeem Peoples, another young man from South Carolina, I'm sure he liked to have hung on to that interception, but he was doing what he was coached to do. And some good things are happening to us right now, Brian. Pioneer offense holds on to the ball for a minute 46. So we have about a minute and a half to play, and a very late flag comes in and a pass interference on Peoples. And so it's first and 10 from the 47. A false start will back up Newberry five yards. And then the defensive pressure for another guy who's made plays this year, Emmanuel Bunbley. Yeah, Emmanuel comes rolling in right here, putting a little heat on him, does a good job, causing him to pop it up in the air there and grab a hold of him and get him on the ground. They, they, that, that ball was incredibly slippery. Obviously, we, we had our share of putting it on the ground, but fortunately uh, they're starting to do a little late in the ball game too. All right, so Zach Blair is in. There are no Barry now with no timeouts remaining in this football game. We'll face a third down and about 17, actually make that more like third down and 20. Zach Blair remains in the football game, their third quarterback, and uh, has a man that is, that's open, but maybe the play of the year quite possibly right yeah, here. It definitely gives us a chance right here. We're, we're flying around, and there's Lakeith and Kashad causing the ball to pop loose. And, we do a great job jumping in there, and I think that's, uh, I don't even know who that that's is. It gets on it. Is that, yeah, I guess it is. E-Man, as we call him. Uh, great job by Lakeith causing the fumble. Great job by Big E-Man, Emmanuel getting on the rock, and now we just got to secure the victory, and uh, I'm getting a little chill here just talking about our kids are so happy and so excited, and you can feel it that uh, we're finally getting ready to pull one out. And you know, 2006 was talked about in the game, in the press box with Ron Parker and the miracle at Pioneer Field. When you can do a final play that we're going to see and just take a knee, that's probably the greatest feeling in, in football. I mean, especially when you're the one taking a knee, Brian, it's a whole lot better than being on the other side of that coin. And uh, I did have one of their coaches come up to me after the game and say, if anybody says we took one from you today, or that we took one from Newberry today, he said, remember back in 06, whenever we literally took one from you. So I guess it was our turn to win. We found a way to get it done and happy for our football team, happy for our kids. and. Just excited that we could uh, we could find a way to come back, find a way to score when we needed to score, make plays defensively when we need to make plays, and uh, put that one to rest. All right, offensively, the game and the numbers aren't going to be very pretty in this contest, but we'll get into that coming up. Malcolm Pendergrass, though, 12 of 25, didn't throw for a touchdown, had an interception, threw for 116, but when it mattered, it was able to complete some passes late in the contest after the defense kept you in this game. Newberry did you a little bit of a favor. They missed some kicks and, and, and those types of things, but that just that's kind of the nature of football. That, that kind of happens. Um, defensively, Laurente Archie, Keith Brown, both career high in tackles with 14 and 12 respectively. Um, behind the line, you made nine tackles. You held the Two greatest guys who make hits behind the line for Newberry, basically null and void in the football game. The reigning player of the week defensively was Taylor McDonald. Uh, another guy on this team, Alstiva Squirewell, he was third, sixth in the nation in hits behind the line. He only had two tackles on the day. Uh, again, I think uh, overall, Newberry comes in, they don't pass it, 5 of 13, through for just 50 yards. Uh, they did run it for about 194 yards, and they came out in the second half and totally changed their spread, everything, to too tight. Um, 
weird game, I think, is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, absolutely. Again, I think they felt like the only way they could lose the game was to turn it over. We hadn't done much at all offensively, and the field was playing to their advantage. But uh, little did they know, we, we had a little something left in, in, in our pocket, and we found it in the fourth quarter. But uh, I'd say looking back on it, they're probably wishing they would have went ahead and stuck to their game plan and tried to score instead of shortening the game. But in that situation, you never know. It's one of those games that you, you probably want to kick off at the beginning of the game, and you want to kick off at halftime. You don't really want the ball backed up in your own territory with the field conditions the way they are. And who knows? There's a lot of ifs and buts. And, uh, we made some plays at the end, and we, we, we needed a win and found a way to get one. It, it, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, it's a season-defining win. Do you see it that way? I told our team in our Sunday meeting that a win like this should elevate us into another category because we've we found a way to, to not win some ball games, and now we found a way to come back and win one that we might not should have. I mean, it was a very tough situation, very tough circumstances. and. Defensively played lights out. Offensively didn't play very well, but found a way to win. And Pioneers get the win, get their second win of the year, their first win in the league. And now the Newberry Wolves also fall to two and four here on the season. For this guy, it's 88 wins. 41 of them have been from come from behind. This was an 11 point deficit for the Pioneers. In the series now, Tuskegee owns a 9 8 series lead. And four of the games in the series have been decided by three points or less. Nine of them have been decided by seven points or less between Tuscaloosa and Newberry, just not the offensive explosion we're used to seeing with these two teams. We come back, when we come back, we'll meet a couple of the defensive stars of the contest, and we'll have our Applebee's interview with Laurente Archie and Lakeith Brown. Coach DeBus will come back and help us wrap up and look ahead to Carson Newman. That's when the Frankie DeBus Show continues after this. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tuscaloosa College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System and electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBusk Show. Once again, the voice of the pioneers, Ryan Staten. Welcome back to the Frankie DeBus Show. The Tuscaloosa Pioneers knocked off the Newberry Wolves by a final of 16 to 14. There were a couple of great plays in the contest on offense. Tuscaloosa wasn't great on third downs and finally converted that third down. And there was a lot of excitement. But folks, let's just be honest, and we haven't said this in the last five to six years. The defense kept us in this football game. After the game, I had a chance to catch up with a couple of the heroes. First, Laurente Archie and Lakeith Brown. Go easy. It was Lakeith Brown's first time in front of the camera. There are Applebee's player interviews. Joined by Lakeith Brown, Laurente Archie, two of the big defensive players in this football game. The Pioneers win over Newberry. This guy here, Lakeith Brown, comes up with 12 tackles and a big hit at the end of the game. Lakeith, let's go back to the start. Uh, they get a big lead of 7 nothing, and then up to 14-3. to Guys never gave up hope. What was it like being out there in the third quarter where they were just primarily running the football? Well, we felt like we just had to read our keys, just keep grinding, just keep sticking it in there. It's not a team that was turning it over, and you guys were forcing some turnovers. Did you feel you were a turnover away from turning this game around? Yeah, we had a lot of opportunities to keep turning this game around. We kept sticking to it. We kept doing what we had to do, and then we turned the game around. You know, they were yelling for a pass interference there at the end. The ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. You made that big hit on oh, no, their crossing pattern there late in the contest. Were you surprised they didn't go to the air more in the second half? Yeah, I thought they were going to start going deep a little bit more since we started stopping the run game. It was hey, – that's all I can say. What they're, you know, they, they come off the bus, they look like they're an NFL type of a team. You know, it's your first look at Newberry. What do you think about the Newberry Wolves? And uh, could be a good series for you for the next three years. <laughs> well, it seems like we're going to have a good team next year and the next year after that. Defense going to keep doing what we got to do. And hopefully we keep sticking it in there. We're going to keep doing what we got to do for the next couple of years going against them. All right, second, last play of the game. Lakeith Brown, you are involved in this last play. Take me through the last play and what happened. How you, how'd you guys jar the ball free to get the football back? Well, we seen I seen pass coverage, so I seen the lineman doing the little drop. So once I seen a little stop by the wide receiver, quarterback threw it to him. My safety, a king people, he went for the attack, but he missed, came downhill, and I just hit him. Outstanding. Outstanding job. Congratulations. 
Appreciate that. Lakeith Brown, Archie, Le, Lerante Archie, we call him Cornbread. Uh, 14 tackles ties your career high in this football game. Seemed like you're everywhere. I, I would say you probably made a, at least 80 plays in the game. Let's start with the interception because it seemed to be a play that could turn the game around. Didn't turn out that way. Was that because of the weather conditions here today? Uh, yeah, I, uh, we knew we, we had to, we had to make a big play, but we try not to stress on it. When you stress on making a big play, you end up making a mistake. So I just try. I just read my keys. I run. I read run. I seen pass. Quarterback scrambled up. I locked on my man. I looked at the quarterback. I just seen the ball. When I see ball, it's my ball. I need that. I had to get it. You know, they had field position the entire, but basically through three quarters. Um, again, you come up with a big forced fumble in the game as well. I think that turned away a scoring opportunity. Again, more life for this defense. You guys are very opportunistic defense in this game. Yes, sir. We, we, we very physical. We, uh, more than more than the user defense. We, we very physical. We, we, like I said, we like playing with the with the uh, with the, with the pressure on our back, especially when we're down in the twenty mm -hmm. and when we're down in the ten. It's like. Everybody lock in, and I, I love it. I just love the, the, the bun we got as a team, man, as a defense anyway. I don't have the numbers on how long you guys were on the field in the third quarter, but it seemed like if there's 15 minutes, you're out there for 15 and a half minutes. Um, did that get to you at, at, at any point in the in the third quarter? No. Nah, uh, you, you get tired a little bit and you get fatigued, man. That's how you know you need to lock in. That's our, that's our motto all year, man, lock in. Back eye shirt locked in. When, when I talked to you earlier, I, mm -hmm. I told you locked in. And we know we had to lock in. We communicate with each other. We go out and execute and make, make it a little easy. All right, let's talk about some of the offense because we did have to score today in this game. So when you put Justin Houston in the backfield, he gets that big first down. Then we throw to Deion Hicks down here inside the five. How invigorating was that for that for your defense? Yeah, we at the end of the day, man, things probably don't go our way on the offense side of the ball, but we don't lose hope in our boys, man. We already know what's going on. And if we lose hope, it won't be too good in our defense. So after every, every time we got the field, man, we told the offense we had their back. And as you see today, we had their back. <laughs> Is this a season-changing type win for this team? Yeah, it, it, it is very, it, it is very season-changing win. You got Carson Newman next. What would it be like for you to get a win against Carson Newman? Yeah, I, yeah. <laughs> for my last, uh, my my last collegiate collegiate year, I, I love it. Like this, this is our first time beating Newberry since I've been here. Also, so beating Newberry and Carson Newman. Yeah, yeah. That would be yes. 14 tackles for this guy, Lerante Archie. 12 tackles for this guy, Keith Brown. They're our Applebee's interview for the Frankie DeBus Show. Our Applebee's player interviews. Thanks to Lerante Archie and Keith Brown. Now it's time to take a look at our players of the week. We'll start on offense with our Sodexo Offensive Player of the Week. On the offensive line, Billy Munker. Started at center, moved back to tackle. The junior from West Palm Beach, Florida, out of Royal Palm Beach High School. High school teammate of that of Malcolm Pendergrass. Our Greenville Light and Power Defensive Players of the Week. Kashad Lyons has been a staple as a Player of the Week all season long, and the senior continues to have an all-conference type year. Out of Ellenwood, Georgia from Woodland High School, seven tackles, a tackle for loss and a sack in the game. On the year, 45 tackles, nine for loss and five sacks. For his career, 137 tackles, 18 for loss and nine sacks. Keith Brown, the redshirt freshman out of Athens, Georgia from Cedar Shoals High School, finished with a career-high 12 tackles, two for loss, and a forced fumble, including the forced fumble that basically ended the game. For the season now, 35 tackles, three for loss, and he missed two games this year. And Lerante Archie, the senior preseason All-America, All-Conference out of Fairburn, Georgia from North Atlanta High School. A game high, a career high, 14 tackles, tying the high he had last year versus Catawba. He also had an interception. Interestingly enough for Lerante Archie, it is his third interception all time against Newberry. It is his sixth all time interception in Tusculum history, which is tied for fifth most all time. On the year now with 37 tackles for his career, 222 tackles, moving him into the top 12 in school history. Our Green Coach Tour Special Teams Players of the Week, Logan Cornelius, our place kicker and the senior from Chattanooga, Tennessee out of East Hamilton High School, one of two on field goals and one for one in point afters and averaged just un under 58 yards on kickoffs, controlling the kick return game. Also, Mike Mosa, the junior from Memphis, Tennessee out of Whitehaven High School, defensively in the game, finished with just two tackles, but three of the biggest plays you'll see. He also forced a fumble early, which resulted in the field goal for the Pioneers. He had the block punt, which resulted into the game-winning touchdown, and he had the quarterback hurry with its second down, make that third down and five inside the Pioneer five-yard line late in the contest for Mike Mosa. Our Andrew Johnson Bank calls of the game, why not? 
Mike Mosa, and Emmanuel Bunbley. Snap. Oh, he bobbled it. He'll get it off. No, he blocked it. Mike Mosa got the ball, blocked it at the 24. Low snap. Clark couldn't come up with it, and Mike Mosa was back there and got it. So a low snap on uh, second and long. The pass is complete. The ball is loose. It's picked up by the Pioneers. Tushkulam comes up with the boat jarring hit at the 40, and the Pioneers have it first and 10. Newberry can't stop the clock. And on the play, Emmanuel Bunbley with the fumble recovery for the Pioneers. It's time now for our Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. There wasn't a whole lot of offensive numbers in the game. The third down conversions were not great. Time of possession was awful. But the Pioneers win, and Fernando Smith rushed for a pair of fourth-quarter touchdowns to rally the Pioneers from an 11-point deficit. It snaps a four-game losing skid, as well as a four-year drought against the Wolves. Both teams now at 2-4 and four on the year. The Wolves fall to 1-3 and three in the conference. The Pioneers improve to 1-2 and two in the league. The two teams combined for nine fumbles on the afternoon, including five lost and two interceptions. Tusculum limited Newberry to 244 yards of offense, just 50 yards passing for the preseason first team all-conference. W.T. Murden, 2 of 8 with a pick, just 27 yards. Meanwhile, Fernando Smith finished with 85 yards on the day. Malcolm Pendergrass passed for 116 yards, and about 100 of that came in the fourth quarter. He went 12 of 25 in the game. Laurente Archie again tied that career high with 14 tackles while also recording his sixth career interception. Keith Brown, 12 tackles, including two for loss. For the Pioneers, they take on the Carson Newman Eagles next Saturday. It'll be homecoming at Pioneer Field. And just a final note on that one, last time a nationally ranked opponent came to Pioneer Field and lost, Carson Newman, 2008. Yeah, the Jeremy Thompson game, 45 to 44. That's a look at your Creekside Market post-game wrap-up. The coach joins us when we come back, and we'll talk a little bit more about the history of Tushkillum and Carson Newman right after this on the Frankie DeBus Show. Andrew Johnson Bank was founded on conservative banking principles. Over the last 30 years, they have steadily built their balance sheet and increased capital by following prudent lending principles and avoiding risky investments. In uncertain times, you can continue to count on Andrew Johnson Bank. Your locally owned community bank. A strong heritage, a stronger future. Andrew Johnson Bank, member FDIC. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve, so while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market, just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway, Creekside Markets in Greene County. And Welcome back into the Frankie DeBuss Show. Tusculum defeats Newberry 14, or I should say 16 to 14 this past Saturday from Pioneer Field in a rainy, soaked Pioneer Field. Now this coming Saturday, Tusculum will help celebrate homecoming and Hall of Fame. Bob Dibble, Craig Pritchett, Shannon Palinka Stone are going to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. There's going to be all sorts of great times and great atmosphere and festivities that will be taking place for homecoming. And oh, by the way, the Carson Newman Eagles come rolling into town. Now, just a little bit of history. The last time we played a ranked opponent and won 2008, Pioneer Field, Carson Newman came in. We got the win, got the conference championship as well in the process. Now, this is a team that comes in ranked. They've had a week off. They've had a chance to kind of rest and, and come in, and here comes another alignment assignment football team. Uh, really, our, our kids are, are looking forward to this, Brian. I mean, it's uh... Thank goodness we, we found a way to win a game to give us a little boost, give us a little momentum going into into the to play Carson Newman. They got a really good football team. They do a lot of really good things. Uh, uh, I, I keep hearing from every coach in the, in the uh, conference how good a football team we have. Mm -hmm. uh, I believe that still today. And we finally put four quarters together last week and found a way to win. We just got to do it again this week. And we'll have our challenges. Uh, they're they're potent offensively. They they got a lot of new faces defensively. I, I notice a lot of new names over there, but. 
Uh, they still do a good job. Nothing's going to change. They're going to do what they do. They're going to do what they do well, and we just got to find a way to do a little better. Andy Hibbett is one of the top runners in the league. He'll be in town along with the Carson Newman Eagles and Coach Ken Sparks, the longest tenured coach in the league, and all, all of that surrounded by all the festivities of homecoming and, and what goes on. Just a special week here on campus. Absolutely. It's good to see the alums come back. and. You know, our, our offices are over in Rankin Hall, which was a dorm at one time, and uh, every year during homecoming we'll have uh, usually an elderly couple come through and let us know that that was their dorm room years ago. And, you know, it's, it's interesting, it's fun, it's exciting. Uh, they all come back to watch the football game. That's what I try to convince our players of and let them know that's really why they come. They're, they're coming to watch the football game. We need to have some success, and uh, we've got to find a way to do it right every single snap for four quarters. And, uh, we'll, we'll have a great week of practice. I know our kids will be enthused and excited. And you know, we, uh, when we're out of class on Monday and Tuesday of this week for a block break, so they'll feel like they're NFL players and get a little rest, do nothing but football, and then they'll start a new block on Wednesday. And hopefully, everything will be uh, looking looking sharp for us here on campus. Hopefully, the weather will hold off and our facilities crowded and get our field back to where we need it to, and get ready to line up and play another football game. Congratulations on the win. Best of luck. We'll see you Saturday. Thank you, Brian. That's Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBush. Tusculum versus Carson Newman. Join us on the Pioneer Sports Network. We'll begin with coverage at 1.30. Kickoff will be 2.30. You can watch the game with a live feed free at TusculumPioneers.com with also the radio feed to that. But to join us on the Pioneer Sports Network. Many thanks this week once again to Paige. Cody's been called to duty. He's dressing out. But uh, we appreciate his efforts this year as well. For Nathan Humbert, for Pioneer Coach Frankie DeBusk, I'm Brian Staden. And until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Frankie DeBusk Show with head coach Frankie DeBusk. Featuring coaches' interviews, player spotlights, highlights, and statistical breakdowns. Presented by Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Green Coach Tours, proudly serving the traveling public since 1945. Andrew Johnson Bank, a strong heritage, a stronger future. Home owned and operated with locations in Johnson City, Jonesboro, Morristown, Cleveland, and Greenville. Creekside Markets. Don't pass by, stop by with three locations in Greene County. Special consideration from Comcast Cable through Xfinity. The Frankie DeBusk Show is a special presentation of the Pioneer Sports Network.